yay, we did it. I pushed all the right buttons and hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, I'm here and it's Tuesday for our local magic live sessions. Um, and just to get myself a little haircut, got some fresh, some fresh shorn sides. <laughs> um, and it feels like a lot of things are coming together this week. Um, I don't know if you ever feel like that. If you have weeks where everything, you didn't plan it this way, but everything just kind of aligns happening all at the same time. Um, it's really exciting, but it's a lot. <laughs> it's kind of overwhelming sometimes. Um, and this goes really well with the session I did a week or two ago um, that I called Take a Dang Break because sometimes we need to rest. Um, it feels like we have to ramp up and stuff um, before big events, big end of the year festivities. Um, but the most important thing is is to rest. <clears throat> and this kind of ties into what I was wanting to talk about today because <clears throat> so often we, as perfectionists and overthinkers um, and anxious people, um, especially those who, like if you know your default um, way to handle conflict is a, a fight or a flight. Um, a freezer's this totally different. We'll get to that in a second. Hi, Grace. Nice to see you. Um, uh, but if you are one of these people, it's so important to know when that default kicks in, how it manifests in your body, and how to know whether it's uh, a really too difficult situation for you or if you are making it too difficult by being in your fight or flight, right? And it's not really your fault, of course, because your nervous system does what it does. Um, and so we really need to know when we're getting in our own way, especially when we're singing. Um, so I had a session yesterday with a couple students and so many of them are feeling the same thing. Like they go up to their high register or they're trying to hit like very high um, notes in their belt and their chest and they're just feeling this strain or like it doesn't sound how they want it to or it's too breathy. Um, so in those moments, uh, usually, so we're talking about the breath all the time, but we're specifically talking about it right now um, in that class. And usually it's not that you don't have enough air most of the time our body is really good at taking in the air that we need for whatever we're about to do. And of course, when you're learning how to sing for the first time, it takes training because speaking doesn't usually take as much power and as much air as singing does. So there's some teeny little tweaks and stuff that have to happen. But after you have, you know, learned how to sing a little, how to breathe a little differently for singing, then we need to be aware that when we are trying to hit those high notes or when we're trying to sing a little louder for some people, this is where it comes in, the default in your body, like on a subconscious bodily level, is to push and to force and to fight, right? Because that's your default and it's it's just how your brain chemistry and mechanism works. It's how it was set up. It's how your software was programmed when you were very young. And so we can't really change that and that's okay. But what we can change is how much of the time we notice it and do things for ourselves and our body that we can have a better environment. And then it's easier to be more resilient. And by resilient and singing, I mean, if you mess up, quote unquote, mess up, you start over again and you don't let that mess up get the rest of your song or even the rest of your phrase that you're singing um, down, right? You don't let it take you down to the ground because in every moment we have a chance to restart and start over. Um, it also means resiliency when you're singing means even before you sing a note, you noticing when that tension is starting to come in and that fear is taking over and saying, nope, I can choose a different path. Right? I can choose to sing this note from a place of ease and relaxation and here especially 
knowing that my instinct is to fight and it will come from here, I'm going to put that fight instinct somewhere else in my body. Like that's why I do um, have people bend their knees when they're going up for a big high note, because that can help you put that feeling, that need to fight and that need to force notes into your abs and your legs, which are bigger muscles that can handle these engagements and they're not directly connected to your vocal folds so they're not going to mess with your pitch and they're not going to mess with your airflow so this fight mechanism as we know it's ingrained in us we can't get rid of it necessarily but when you notice things ahead of time which takes practice over time hey tina welcome um when you notice things we start to be able to like head things off at the pass right we see it coming we see that crazy gremlin coming down the road in front of us and we're like, nope, other way, <laughs> right? I'm not dealing with that today. And so we choose to make a turn and we choose to find the ease instead of allowing the nervous system to completely take over because we know that big picture, singing is not a threat to our selves, right? We, it's not a survival thing, although our nervous system takes it that way. So as we get better and better and better at practicing, seeing that gremlin coming and starting to feel that gremlin on your shoulders saying like all the, all the nasty things it says, like, are you sure you should be trying this note? Are you sure you should be singing in front of these people? You're not ready yet. And all that is just your brain and how it was wired. And we need to find a separation from that, which is why I began this whole gremlin conversation in the first place in my, with my students is because when you can feel that gremlin voice, when you can feel the feelings, you can feel a tightening in your body start to come in. Sometimes it's your nervous system and sometimes we can't stop that from happening. But what we can do is notice it know that it's not ourselves, which is why I have you actually like name your gremlin, know what your gremlin looks like so that we can separate from that feeling. So we don't have to identify with that feeling of you're doing it wrong, of you're not enough, you're doing too much, whatever it is for you. We don't have to identify with that. It's just the freaking gremlin, right? So what we want to do is, hey, um, Allison, I want to say, um, welcome. And uh, what we want to do is start to get really super good at noticing when that comes in. And yes, your nervous system is going to do its thing. It's going to start to, you're going to have clammy hands. You're going to have sweatiness. You're going to have a little bit of throat closure maybe. And so what we want to do is notice how we can give our body what it needs. Because in those moments, if we're if the nervous system is dysregulated already, we have to go through the body. There's no amount of affirmations that we can do to say, I, I'm, I just, just like tell yourself that you're better than you are. It's not going to compute when you're, you know, when your engine's on a hundred. So we have to go into the body and say, okay, I am safe. I know that all these voices in my head are coming from George, which is my gremlin's name. And you can insert your gremlin's name here. <sighs> I am safe, I am good, I know this, I know how to sing this, my goal is ease and freedom. And you can do a whole number of things, like even just this helps so much, it feels like the, the snow in the snow globe kind of just settling. Um, grab a hold of your wrists just to remind yourself that you are held, you are safe. It just, it changes so much. You can try it right now. Um, I follow Ruby Rose, uh, who is muscle music. She does this a lot. You do it like a hug, but one hand under your armpit, one hand under your shoulder. Just reminding yourself that you are safe, that you are okay. You're not going to be kicked out of the group if you let out some weird note that you didn't expect. It's okay. And so the combination of going in through the body and separating yourself from the gremlin does so much for your body and mind. It gives you a little bit of space to 
try things and to mess up because that's how we learn is to mess up. And um, so when we're talking about giving ourselves the space to let go a little bit, this is what I mean. And unfortunately, it's not always going to be easy to do like that. Like when you're in, like if you're before a show, you're about to step on stage, your body's freaking out, like your nervous system's just go, go, going. And you're like, I don't know if I can actually step out on stage right now. I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth. Who knows, right? All we can do is do our best to take care of ourselves in that moment because nobody else is going to take care of us, right? Nobody is going to wave a magic wand and give you the automatic power to just belt with ease you know, whatever note you want. It takes time and training yourself. And by training yourself, I mean, yes, your muscles to find the space and to sing a big belty note without muscling it. And um, I was just talking about bending your knees, getting your abs involved, giving your body something to muscle underneath your rib cage so that it's not muscling up here. Um, but also you can give yourself before you even step into that, like step into the wing before you go on stage, give yourself, you know, do some shaking, like get your blood moving a little bit. Um, she also talks about planking. So you can do like a little plank. Um, hey, you bet, welcome. You can do like a little diagonal plank if, if, if full planks are not for you, like they are not for me. <laughs> I'm not strong enough for that. Oh, you can just find a desk and go engage so that you're pushing really really hard into something and so when you're contracting your muscles your hormones have somewhere to go so those nervous hormones cortisol and adrenaline this 20 to 30 seconds that you're planking they're going into your muscles and your muscles are taking care of them for you the muscles um, are the trash can of the body she says so in those 20 to 30 seconds those cortisol and adrenaline should come down a little bit and once we take care of all of this, once we find our gremlin and say, F you, go away. Once we give our body something to grab onto, once we let those hormones flow through a little bit instead of hanging out and just derailing your thought process, then we can come at, we can step out on stage. We can turn on, press the record button on the song that you're recording. You can you know, step into somebody else's space and say, here, let me sing for you. Um, sometimes this can happen even before you step into a voice lesson with me. Like plenty of people have told me that they're more nervous <laughs> in a Zoom session with me than, you know, singing in front of their, their family or something. And that's totally fine. Understandable, right? No judgment. It doesn't make you less of a person. doesn't make you less of a singer. We are just learning our mechanism and all the different layers of it, right? Because we are not just a piano where you can press a button and say, here, this is your note. There's so many more layers to it. Like pianos don't have fear. <laughs> pianos don't have trauma. Pianos don't have, uh, you know, teachers that told them they sucked when they were 10, right? So there's all of these layers that we have to consider as singers because our instrument is part of our body and it's directly immediately related to our mind and to our nervous system and so when your nervous system is like getting revved up and saying something is wrong <laughs> yeah right you never think about this some might i don't know pianos might have a soul who knows we don't know these things um but when you are coming into this place of knowing what's happening it's oh shit Oh man, I have my time limit set. I got to turn that off when I do these. Um, so when you're coming into a place of knowing your body and knowing your nervous system so well, it doesn't become like a freaky thing anymore. You become this like ever knowing that something is happening. You're instead of being like, oh shit, I'm really sweaty. My hands are clammy. I can't really speak very well right now. It doesn't become like a, a thing that will derail you. It becomes a thing that you knew was going to happen and you know what to do in that situation, right? You can do use any of those tools that we just talked about. Talking to your gremlin, telling him to F the heck off, go visit Pluto for a year. I don't care. He's going to come back. 
you know, that's his job and that's what he does and he's very good at his job, sadly. But it's part of us. And so all we can do is say, hey, I need some space. Get your gremlin free time. Go in through your body. And then practice the passage that you're going for from a place of your priority being ease and openness, right? So if you're going into your higher register and that's not your usual comfort zone, which it isn't for a lot of us, we can start to feel a little bit of tightening happening, especially in your pharynx, whether that is your actual muscles closing, whether it's your soft palate coming up, whether it's your tongue pulling back, it, it's a closure because, you know, what's the, the position that happens when humans are afraid? Fetal position, right? You go close, close, close. And what we need to do is open, open, open. And that's really hard to do when you are, your habit when you're afraid is to close. So we have to, when we're rehearsing, letting ourselves be in a gremlin free zone, finding those spaces where we can just play a little bit, right? So let me turn my piano on. We have a couple minutes left. So for example, if you're going up to like this note, say let's see if we're gonna play here we go so we're going up here ah, and that feels a little bit tight ah, that's your default or it becomes breathy ah, that is number one not necessarily a problem number two we can choose a different way right my goal is always to not tell you that there's a problem but let's say you want to sing it a little louder, a little more intensely. Okay, let's find another tool, right? It's like we're going through a video game and looking to pick up hammers and paintbrushes and um, measuring sticks and stuff. We're just looking to pick up new tools to put in your toolbox so you can pull them out when you want to. And that's always my goal. So um, when you're going up to this note, let's say we went about this note. So we want it to be a little more like, ah, we want it to be nice and powerful and forward. Um, hopefully that didn't break the microphone. Um, but if it feels like it's closing to you, then we want to find a way that it doesn't feel like it's closing. So we can come down a little bit, ease into it. Maybe start here and let's start with a speaky sound. Because when we're speaking, we know how to do that. Our nervous system doesn't often get dysregulated when we're speaking. We can imagine talking to somebody else across the street with no problem, no strain. So we say, hey, how's it going, right? And if we take it to this level, hey, how's it going? That feels pretty easy for me. Um, if this is too high for you, you can totally take it down. So that, I felt this closure open up. Hey, how's it going? And so when you're paying attention to the, the space in here, when you're paying attention to your soft palate, your tongue, how they feel, we can remember that and bring it a little more into a singy place. But be careful because sometimes our subconscious, when we're singing, when we're adding music to it, we go right back into those old habits because that's how your body uh, like relates to singing. So we automatically go back into, ah, and there's closure and there's muscle pulling and there's no clear direction that you're giving your body, which is usually where I say the, the wobbly, yodely sound comes from. Um, unless you're doing it on purpose, which a lot of people do. Um, so if we're trying to get up into this higher one, we can start, keep using that speaky feeling. Hey, how's it going? And then we go up another one. Hey, how's it going? That still feels not too bad for me. It's getting a teeny bit tighter, but that's just because that's, we're nearing the top of my chest voice range and that's totally normal. And so now we just make it a little longer we're not singing it, we're just making it a little longer. Remember, we're learning how to let go and give ourselves as much space as possible. We're taking our hands off the wheel, right? So if you feel, when you're about to go for this note, if you feel like, like I gotta do something, I don't know how to do it, you feel despair, that's your cue. That means that we gotta go into the body, right? We have to remind our body that we're safe. We have to say F you, gremlin. And just, play with this speaky sound, right? Hey, how's it going? So now we're gonna make it a little longer. Hey, 
Hey, how's it going? Pretty doable, right? You still feel like you're speaking. And then if we're making it a little more musical. Hey, how's it going? Now you're singing, right? There's not a whole lot of difference. You're just adding a little bit of music and a little bit of rhythm and a little bit of flow to it, but you're still feeling that openness, the open pharynx, open space, open tube. And if you feel any fear or tension start to come in, use your legs, right? Like I said, stand up, bend your knees as you're going into this so you can remind your body that the pushing and the fighting doesn't have to come from here, it can come from underneath. We don't have to get rid of it because it's a part of you, but it's coming from your legs and your abs, right? If you stand up and you bend your knees a little bit, you can feel those at least start to engage a little bit, right? So now we start to come in through here. Hey, how's it going? Easier? Let me know how that got, how that went for you. So it really is a lot of body hacking, um, a lot of nervous system hacking, a lot of mind hacking. Um, we do so many different techniques in here, but that's my favorite magic tricks to help you let go, to help you release, to help you completely know your voice so well that when this stuff comes in, when this this dysregulation comes in, when this gremlin voice comes in, it's not so scary anymore. And we start to see it as, oh, that whole thing, you know? It's like just an old painting on the wall that, you know, used to bother you and it doesn't anymore. Or it's like my favorite uh, metaphor that I've been using lately for anxiety is uh, chihuahuas. <laughs> no offense to anybody who loves chihuahuas, but like my anxiety sometimes feels like it's a little chihuahua that I have in this little bag, you know, like Paris Hilton used to have her little dogs in her bag. And it's just barking a lot, all the time. Not 100% of the time, but a lot. Like when something gets a little scary, it goes, <laughs> right? And so it starts to uh, be really annoying when you take it as, oh God, I have to do something. It's a problem. What am I going to do about this? I have to shut this dog up. Otherwise, everybody else is going to hate me. I'm going to get kicked out of the group, blah, blah, blah. But your chihuahua is a part of you, right? You can't just set the chihuahua down. You have to take care of the chihuahua. <laughs> so in those moments, you know, when you have a dog that barks a lot, you probably like get tuned out to the dog barking, right? This is what I want you to start feeling like. The chihuahua barking doesn't mean that everybody hates you and that you have to fix something. It's just that chihuahuas bark, right? They just love to let you know that they're there and they love to let you know when other people are there and they just like to talk to you, right? And so I'm not a dog trainer. This is not a great metaphor, but the idea is that over time, I want you to start tuning out that chihuahua, right? You can't stop the chihuahua. You just have to say, oh, there he is again, doing his thing. And then you continue on your path and you keep going and you practice how we practice it. If you're going up for a belty note, speak it first because that's how your body feels safe in that space, right? And even though when you start singing, if you're going up into a note, like if you're um, going, ah, if that feels like, oh my God, something's about to happen that's wrong. Oh my God, something weird's about to come out of my mouth. Just remember, we're playing right? Take your hands off the wheel. Give your abs and your legs something to grab onto so you can have hands free, right? And by hands, I mean more like this. So in those moments, you have all the tools, you have all the power. Don't give the power to your gremlin, okay? Just know that you have the ability to make whatever sound you want. It's just that we put so much pressure on singing and we give our anxiety free reign to just take us down. And so in those moments, what I want you to do is just say, oh, hey, what's going on? I hear you. I don't have to listen to you anymore. Yeah. So hopefully this helps. Um, again, nervous system and anxiety, gremlin voice, very different things. Um, it takes some time to, to relearn what they both look like in, and to discern which one it is and which one to listen to and which one to not. So that's takes time, but I, you're all very capable and I believe in you and I'm here if you have any questions. My DMs are always open.
seriously. Um, I love you very much, and uh, I'm going to go because I have a lesson. But um, if you are in my world already, cool. Thanks for being here. Love to see you. Um, if you are not, if you're curious uh, and you want to get more in my world, um, the best way is to go check out the bio. There's a um, three magic tricks to sing better in seconds, a little mini ebook PDF that I wrote, totally free for you. Um, you're always welcome to um, book a trial session with me if you're curious more about me and what it would look like to work with me. Um, I do have a vocal magic um, signature program that's six months long that's for dedicated to, of course, Allison, thank you for being here. It's so nice to have you. Um, if you're interested in, you know, really diving in over six month program and committing to completely changing how you relate to singing and working with all these nervous system tools and all these mental tools, um, it changes people's lives. It's changed my life three or four times now, and it's amazing. Um, I've seen people go from terrified to sing in front of me to busting on the street with no problem. Seriously, not even lying. So um, it's really a cool place to be. And if I get enough interest, um, I might start a new cohort in July or so. Um, not planning on it until September, but if people really are interested and into it, happy to start a new one in July because I love it so much. It makes me happy. So um, yeah, Grace is here and she is a testament to the Vocal Magic program. It's changed your life. I love it. It's so nice to see you. I haven't heard from you in a while. Thank you for being here. Um, so yeah, if you're curious, I'm here for you. Um, I hope this helps. Let me know uh, how this works how this lands for you. If you try any of these tools this week, come back and, and tell me how it works for you. Um, I'm always curious to see how it lands in different people's systems and bodies and everything because we are very different instruments, you know, so I love to hear about how this stuff works for you. But I really think it's very important to know your body and know your system and know what's happening and then learn to take your hands off the wheel a little bit. So I love you and I'll see you very soon.